Good afternoon. What I want to talk about is the creativity that comes about when you also do two, th three things. It's the head, and that's the eyes and the brain, and it's also the heart and the hand. And it's massaging your creativity so that you too will be able to, to make that like, creative leap. So I've got the three kind of areas there that I think is, are incredibly important, the head and the heart and the hand. I was lucky, I came to art early. Uh, and I was interested in modern art, but I was interested in all of it. And the bits that I kind of also loved were architecture and sculpture. And I was also fortunate that at school I learned about Chinese art. So, and it was Chinese ceramics, it was Chinese ink paintings, it was the whole lot, it was architecture as well. And so I came to the East-West, West-East dialogue, from a very early age, from about 17, 18. So, and the thing I liked about Ch Chinese art was that it has this lovely sense of simplicity, but it's a subl sublime simplicity, and it's like a universal truth. And from that, I then looked at Western art and tried to find the same things, that kind of same sense of, like, the sublime. What we're saying is something that we all connect to. I did further study at Sydney University in art history, and unfortunately I did, wasn't able to do any Chinese because it wasn't offered. But I looked and I painted, and I filled my head with all available exhibitions, and I subsequently went to the UK, the US, and through Europe, and looking at, at, um, at, at great museums, and looking at paintings, and reading about art. I had a lot of friends who were artists as well, which was a lovely kind of master class, because they were much older and more successful than I was. And you kind of learn from other people by osmosis and sitting and talking to them. There was a kind of very interesting occasion where I was with a, an older artist, and he said, look, come with me. I've just painted this very, very thin emerald line around the hull of my boat. And I went with him, and, I went, and we just went, we looked at it, we were on, oh, on the water, and I couldn't see any difference. It was just... But he could. He could really see the emerald green line and the hull of the boat. And it was at 11 o'clock at night and I couldn't see anything. But I learned a lot from that, which was like you create your own detail. You create the kind of little incidents that you can use again. And the other thing I learned was that you can draw from your wrist, or from your fingers as well, from your fingers, from your wrist, from your, you know, your, your arm, but also from your entire body. So that kind of thing of like, that you become part of what you're actually drawing. So it wasn't just that kind of thing, it was like the whole bit. And I think that shows in the work. I think that whole kind of sense of like, how you draw and how you take it on, shows up in the work of what, the, the, what I was doing and what I, I think that I subsequently was, was doing as well. But I was also filling my mind. I was filling what I had with education. I was kind of like going, absorbing it all. And I was kind of pretty successful and at 22. And some other people, and my family, uh, my father said, look, why don't we open an art gallery? And I went, oh, OK. And you know, I was kind of vain enough to think it was going to, I could work with uh, the whole kind of thing of family and um, the artists. Um, and seven years later, after a very public um, disaster, I started again as a painter, as an artist. And that's what I was saying about the, the whole th sense of like the, there we go, the hand, is that I really had to retrain. You know, 30, like, what are we doing? Let's get back to what I really was, which was a painter. And I lost the courage to do that. So it was like a part of that whole trilogy again, the heart. I lost the heart of what I was and who I was and was suddenly kind of like thrust back into it, but I also had to learn. And the rebuilding was slow and it was like small bits of paper and A4 bits of paper like I'm holding here and I would draw and kind of like, and, and I'd sell them and it was kind of building and it kind of like, it got better. And part of that drawing was, party, was painting from nature. 
This is an oil painting of Sydney Harbour, done a bit later, but I was doing ink paintings um, around Sydney Harbour and kind of like taking it with the, the on plain air, fantastic Chinese paper, which it's a, a friend of mine had introduced me to in, in Sydney in 1985. And that was like a wonderful kind of connection again to China, to the Chinese art that I loved. And suddenly I had this whole kind of like new sense of direction because I had this incredible thing of Schwann paper. And Andrew, and Andrew was a professor of um, economics, of all things, and a, and a lovely artist, showed me about the secret ingredient, which is alum. There we are. That's an ink painting of an oyster. I was doing little paintings of oysters and drawing them as best as I possibly could, and then I'd eat the, eat the, uh, eat the model. But I worked on the paper, and I found it very precious, and I loved it. And I, and I worked hard on it, but it was incredibly expensive. It was about 100 RMB for a sheet of paper. So it was difficult, and I kind of occasionally worked on it. And there were successes and failures along the way, but I became quite established and quite well known. But the next big thing was coming to China in 2005. And I was invited to come to the Shanghai Art Fair and I'd done a lot of work, and I was working on ink on Chinese paper, and that's ink on Chinese paper. And the people I showed it to went, wow, this is different, this is interesting. And all that kind of work and all that stuff along the road suddenly had paid off, because suddenly there was China. Come to Shanghai, wow. Which brings us back to the whole thing that I'd done the work. And while I was here in China, I was seeing things like these fallen bikes. And you see fallen bikes all over Sh Shanghai. I'm sure you've seen them all over Su Suzhou. But when I came back to Australia, I started drawing these, these, doing pictures of these fallen bikes. And the rest of the world had caught up to China. And people recognised the, the bike as the bike that they saw in Adelaide and the bike that they owned that had fallen over in Brisbane. So suddenly these fallen bike pictures were selling, and they were selling in London, and they were selling in Brisbane, they were selling in Melbourne, they were selling in China, and it kind of like proved the point that it was like I'd done the work and I'd also used my eyes and I'd observed something. Everyone sees this, but no one had actually ever painted it. The other things I looked at were the Chinese windows, these amazing kind of configurations um, which Western artists and Western architects have loved and kind of like reinterpreted. But I was like looking and seeing with new eyes by being in China. This is a mooncake line. So it was like China was influencing me. And the other thing I, I loved was seeing women dancing, women and girls dancing on the streets and in parks, all together, having an incredible time. And I love Chinese calligraphy. I just thought, I get little goosebumps. Yeah, I'm sure you get goosebumps when you see fabulous calligraphy. And I thought, how can I do that? I went, and I made the leap of going, maybe I draw it. Maybe I'll see if I can draw it. And you see, uh, that's on Schwann paper. And in a way, it's that sense of like, I've got the courage, because I've done a lot of it, to have the ink with, on the brush, leaning over the paper and drawing, just doing the rough mark to, so that, that you can see that it's a dancing figure, a dancing woman. So that was like a creative leap as well. It was like the sense of the courage to do it. It was the heart coming out and making you able to kind of do what you'd been trained to do. So I think that creativity is about collecting your ideas and polishing them so that they become your bright, shiny ideas. Or in my case, the, the paintings that are unique to me, that no one else has done. It's kind of following your own sense of who you are and your ideas.
and there's an authenticity with your own observations. And you know, sometimes we, we fall and we need to go back to what we are and what we can be. And I always think that practicing is really fantastic, imitating is really good, but copying is really ter terrible. You know, don't copy. And thinking is active. There was, some, there was a time a few years ago that I was watching my two sons. Here's my oldest son now, who's, who's 22, but that was he's probably about eight or nine. And he was crossing a creek, crossing a little creek, and it was slippery, and it was like, you know, and I'm an anxious father, and I had my other young son as well, kind of like crossing it. And then I'm anxious, but I'm also fascinated because they're making that kind of like, which stone to jump to next? And I'm going, oh, my God, you know. And they finally got to the other side, and it was great. It was fantastic, wonderful. But I also made the connection, and I went, wow, that's kind of like a metaphor. It was like, really summed up for me what it was about. It was like using the head, the eyes, and the brain, and practicing, and having the courage. But it was also chancing your arm, and you know, like, and being a bigger failure or, or winning, and so that you get to the other side. And this is the paintings that I did, which kind of reference um, Japanese and Chinese landscape architecture, which I, I came to Suzhou and I love that kind of whole Suzhou tradition. But these big oil, this is a very large oil painting, and it's River Rocks the Crossing, and that was for me the culmination of looking at things, seeing my kids, and then making that jump, saying that's also what the metaphor is for our life, is going from this side to that side. And I hope, and, I, and I'm sure, that you'll also be able to make the leap from this side to the other side. Oh, and before Brian comes out again, there's one other thing, and that's maintain your sense of humour. Thank you.